Hey everyone, and welcome to this course on Scrimba called React Movie Search. I am really, really excited about this course. I think you're going to enjoy it, and I think you're going to enjoy the Scrimba platform as well. As with any course, you probably want to know a little bit about your instructor. So my name is James Q. Quick, and I am a developer advocate at an amazing company called Auth0. And what we do at Auth0 is make it as easy as possible for you, the developer, to incorporate uh, authentication and authorization, think sign up and access to APIs into your applications. We try to make that as easy as possible. If you're interested in finding me on basically any social media, you can find me at James Q Quick, uh, primarily on Twitter. If you ever have a comment or anything, you can find me there pretty easily. I am uh, three things. I consider myself to be three things, a developer, a speaker, and a teacher. And I've done some combination of those three things for the past seven or so years professionally. I spent lots of time uh, teaching online, teaching in person, just interacting with the community, speaking at conferences, that sort of stuff. And I want to share one idea with you. And this is this motto of learn, build, teach. And it's the idea that you spend a lot of time learning things and then you take what you learn and you use that to build something, a project for yourself, a project at work, a project for a client, for example. And then at the end of all of that, you take what you've learned and you've built and you teach other people how to do it too, because there's no better way to really reinforce the things that you learn than to teach other people how to do it. And that's a big reason why I'm here today. If you want to know any more about the content that I do, the other videos and articles and other ways you can find me, you can find all of that information on my site at jamesqquick.com. And I would love to have you come and find me on other platforms as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to build. I am really excited about this because we are going to build a React movie search app, obviously using React. It's going to be a relatively simple app. It's going to allow the user to type in a query of some sort. In this case, the screenshot here has Jurassic Park. And then it's going to uh, make a call to an API and retrieve movies, uh, information about movies, a list of movies that are relevant to that search. And we're going to do lots of cool things in this course. We're going to use uh, React components. We'll use functional components and a modern feature of React called React Hooks to add state to our functional components. We will write all of the CSS from scratch ourselves in this course using the BIM syntax for organization of our CSS. And we will use the Fetch API to actually make a request to the API to get back our information about movies. I think this is a perfect a short example of how to do some of the core features in React. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, what the API is that we're going to get our information from, and that is the Movie Database API. You can go and look this up at themoviedb.org. And basically what this is, is they've got a repository of information about movies. And then just like you can on their website, we're going to allow our users to be able to perform a search, query the API from the Movie Database, and then get that information back and display it to the users as you would probably expect. Now, I do want to give you one heads up here. If you ever find yourself uh, wanting to move the browser window here or resize it, you have full control over that. So if you ever find that the browser window is covering up some of the code that I'm talking about, you have full access to go and move this around and resize it and do whatever you want. So please take advantage of that. All right. Now that we have a good intro into what we're doing, I just want to kind of reiterate, I think this is a, a really unique opportunity for one, me as an instructor, but also for you as a student on the Scrimble platform. I think it's really, really interesting that you get to follow along through the video that also coincides with the code that I slash we write together. So I think this will really help kind of reinforce all of the learnings along the way and then make sure that you have a very positive experience inside of this platform. So just a quick recap here, we're working with React, we're building a movie search app, we're going to work with fun features like React Hooks, the JavaScript Fetch API, and then work with that movie database API. In the next video, as we get started, we're going to uh, talk through the steps of how to get an API key from the movie database API website so that we can bring that into our application and really start to build this thing out. I'm super excited and I'll see you in the next video. All right, as we already talked about, we're going to be using the Movie Database API to retrieve information about the movies that the user searches. And so if you wanna find basically the landing page, read a little bit more about this API, you can go to www.themoviedb.org. And specifically what we care about is signing up for a free account and then getting an API key uh, so that we can uh, basically validate to the API that we should be able to make API requests to the server. 
So as I mentioned, you will need to sign up for a free account. There's no credit cards or anything like that. It's completely free. And you can find this at, uh, or the instructions here at developers.themoviedb.org slash three slash getting dash started slash introduction. You've got the link here in the slides that you can find. And I just want to cover really quickly what we're using the API key for. For uh, an API like the MovieDB API, they don't want to let just anyone come in and request information about their movies. At a certain point, they might honestly just have too many requests. So you have to go through some sort of validation process to get an API key. And that's basically registering yourself with the API itself so that they know when you make a request, that API is representing you. That API key is representing you. So you can find the getting started docs there. After you've got your free account, um, in the top right, you can click on uh, the avatar for your user in the top right. It's, it's got the J and the purple for me. And then you'll be uh, opening up that window and inside of that window or menu window, you'll have several different options and you can click on settings. And after you get to the settings menu, then you can click on the API link in the left-hand side. And from there, you'll want to request an API key. So under, under the section of request an API key, you can click here. And when you get that API key, make sure that you either save that somewhere on your computer or you leave this page open because we will need this a few videos from now when we actually make the request to the API itself. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Make sure you hold on to that key. We'll use it soon in just a couple of videos and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so we have got a basic React application started up here. And I just wanna walk through uh, really quickly what's actually included. So inside of our index.js, uh, you see we're importing React and React DOM, and you can see that those dependencies are included over here. And it's important to note that these versions 16.13.1, and the stuff that we're gonna do, if you don't see a uh, version that's uh, 16.13 or later, make sure you right click and update these versions uh, to have the updated versions of those libraries. But with those libraries, uh, there's a main component here, and this is a class component in React, which means it extends react.component. Inside of a class component, you have a render function and inside of the return is what actually gets displayed to the screen. So then React DOM just calls its render and it takes the main component, which is this thing, and then displays it to the screen. And then it's cool, uh, because inside of here, once we save this, it'll actually auto reload what's being displayed in our little browser window over here, which is pretty nice. So that's our index.js file. And then we have our styles.css file, where we're gonna start by adding a few uh, base styles to this application. So uh, one of the things I wanna start with is just defining for, H for the HTML tag, the font size, the base font size to be 10 pixels. And then we're going to uh, use rem units to build on top of that. So using relative to the 10 pixel font size there, how big do we want other font sizes to be? So we'll see what that looks like in a second. And then for every element in here, I wanna turn box sizing into border box. Now what border box means is without it, if you define a div, for example, to be uh, a width and height of 100 pixels, it'll be 100 pixels by 100 pixels until you start adding things like a border and padding, and then it will get bigger and bigger based on those things. What border box will do is border box will go ahead and take those things into account, like your border, the width of your border, and your padding, and include that in the 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So this is typically a good way to just make sure you have a good understanding of how uh, your elements get styled or get, um, get their width and height. So then on the body, I'm going to uh, turn off uh, the margin. So margin of zero, padding of zero, and then a background color of just a really light color. So and we could do something like an FA, FA, FA. So it'll be a pretty light color there. Actually, we might want something darker. Let me, let's do RGB and then 244, 244, 244. So a little bit darker there. And then the color, I just wanna set the text color for uh, all of our elements. And we'll do just uh, 333 as a hex code there. And you probably, that's probably a hard, uh, hard color difference to be able to see visually, but uh, just know that it is taking effect. So uh, for our paragraph tags, we want them to be a font size 
uh, 1.6 rem. Again, rem units are relative to uh, this unit up here on the HTML. And then uh, in our small tags, we will uh, do a font size of 1.2 rem. So obviously these are gonna be a little bit smaller. We'll use our small tags for metadata about the, uh, about the movies, things like uh, the year that it was created um, and something like that. So, uh, and then down here, I wanna have two different elements uh, that actually we'll create in a second. So let's go over to our, uh, our Hello World component. And one of the things that I wanna do is surround all of our content with a div that has a class name of container. And if you've uh, seen this before, this is probably familiar for you, but what we can use this container div for is to center our content on the screen and then give some breathing room on the left and right sides to make sure that it doesn't butt right up against the outside. So let's go ahead and style that uh, container class. Let's do dot container. And then uh, inside of here, we'll do a margin of zero auto. This is a trick to go and center its content uh, horizontally. And then with that, we'll set a max width of a thousand pixels, and then we'll set a padding of 40 pixels. So notice it gave some breathing room on the left side here. And uh, if we were to uh, drag this out to be a lot wider, you'll see that this uh, area on the left and the right will get bigger and bigger because it's hitting that max width. But even with that max width, it's making sure to center the content as we would want. And then inside of here, let's change uh, Hello World updated. Let's, let's have this be the name of our app. So React Movie Search. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller now. And for React Movie Search, I want to add a class name of title and save that. And then inside of our styles, let's go ahead and style that. So title will have a font size of maybe 4.4 rem, something like that. How big? All right, that looks good, I think. So notice again, as I stretch this out because of our container div, that content will stay uh, centered, but the actual text is less left justified. So for that text, let's just do a text align of center. That way it'll be right there in the middle for everyone to see so they know exactly what they're working with. So that's going to wrap up this first video of code. In the next one, we're actually going to create our first component, the movie search component. And you'll have a challenge in that one to see how far you can get with that component. So I will see you in the next video. All right, in this video, we are going to create our first component, and this will actually be a challenge for you. So I wanna start off by just kind of looking at, here's a basic React class component. I'm going to show you how to create a React functional component, and then I want you to do the same thing uh, to build out our movie search component. So let me start by uh, creating a new file, and I'll just call this test.js. And inside of test.js, we'll need to import React from React, like that. And then we'll do an export default function. And then the name of this component will just be test in this case. And then inside of the component, you want to return some sort of JSX. And uh, that could just be an element that says hello world. So this is what a basic React functional component will look like. And this is what we're gonna build for our search movies component. So uh, in our search movies component, this is a challenge for you. I want you to create, create the search movies component. And then inside of that component, it needs to have a form with a class of form. All right. And then we'll need to have a label with a for property, which is actually HTML4. So HTML4 equals query, and then and a class of label. All right. And then we'll have an input of type text with a name of query, and then a placeholder of some sort. So you can say uh, type in a movie or uh, something like IE Jurassic Park to say this is a, a potential movie that you might search for, that kind of thing. And then lastly, inside of that form, you wanna have a button with a class of button and a type of submit. So you'll create a new file called the search movies component. You'll stub out that component and then inside of the JSX, you'll add a form with a class of form, a label with an HTML4 property of query, 
and a class of label. And then the text you can have be movie name or something like that. Then you'll have an input of type text with a name of query and a placeholder of some sort. And then lastly, you'll have a button with a class of button and a type of submit. So go ahead and pause the video, take a few minutes to do this yourself, and then we'll regroup and come back together in a few seconds to see how you did and go and work through it together. All right, hopefully that went okay. We will see how you did. So let's start by creating a new file. And this new file will be a search movie.js. Uh, and then inside of here, just like we started the other one, we will import React from React. And then we'll export default function. And then the function name here is search movie. And then uh, now we need to have our return. And then we'll put our JSX inside of here. So we're starting with a form with a class name of form. All right. And then inside of our form, we will have a label with a class name of label and then an html4 property of query and inside of the label we'll just say call it movie name and then close out that label tag so the html4 property is saying this label is for a specific element which we'll do next so we'll do the input with a class name of input and then we'll have a type of text and then we'll have a name of query and a, I'm going to come down to a new line, a placeholder of, let's just say I E Jurassic Park, just to give the user um, an example of a movie they might want to search for. And then lastly, we'll have the button with a class name of button and a type of submit, type of submit. And then uh, for the text, we'll just uh, call it search. So that's what the user is going to do. And I feel like that title is appropriate. So we're exporting uh, our function search movie or search movies is actually which, what that should be. And then inside of here, we've got our form, we've got our label, our input, and our button. And then the last thing we want to do is inside of our index.js, let's import the search, search movie component from the search movies file and again this should be uh, search movies and then we'll drop this in right underneath the h1 so search movies uh, and then uh, go ahead and close the tag so if we save this now it's like unknown require search movies oh and i think we're just missing an uppercase m there let's see if that works oh we misnamed our file here. So this should be the search movies. I didn't even follow my own instructions. Let's see if that works now. And I think lastly, we need to just specify this as a relative path. So we're not searching for packages. We're searching for an actual file. Let's see if that works. And that looks good. So now we're able to see our form here. We can type in there and uh, search will actually reload the page. So we'll need to fix that because that's how forms work by default. But that's going to do it for this video. And the next one, we're going to go ahead and style this form so it looks a little bit better. It's a little bit bigger. It takes up more space so the user can really interact with it there. So that's what we'll do in the next video, and I will see you there. All right. In this video, what we're going to do is go ahead and style our form so it looks a lot better than what it does now. Uh, since we're going to spend most of our time in kind of the small screen, we're going to design this to be mobile first, which means our design that we give to it is targeted at a mobile design. And then uh, we'll add some styles that will make it responsive, but we won't necessarily see that take place on here just because we're on a smaller screen. But we'll add a few styles with a media query to help with that as well. All right, so let's go into, uh, well, first on our uh, search movies component, just remember that we added classes for each of our elements, form, label, input, and button. So we're going to go ahead and style all of those classes. I uh, want to start off with the form, and I'm going to use CSS Grid to style this. And what this is going to do, let's see if we can get this to pop up here. Notice that all of these items just kind of stacked on top of each other. That's because by default, there's only uh, one column in a grid. So as new items are added, they're added to the next row. And so they go stack on top of each other. And then by default, they're taking up the full width, which is actually okay for these small screens. That's kind of what we want. And then for the most part, that's all we need with our form. So now we can go in to our label and start to style it. 
So let's grab our label and let's do a font size of maybe 1.2 rem. So it's a little bit bigger than it was. Let's give just, just a tiny bottom or bottom margin. So this will be maybe 0.2 rem, something really small, just a little tiny space between itself and the input. And then I want to text transform this to be uppercase text. So by making it a little bit smaller, but then uppercasing it, you're kind of playing around with how, how much it's noticed by the user. All right, so now let's go down and do the input. We wanna have these nice circular, circular inputs and buttons and things. So let's start off with a font size of 1.6 rem. So this is gonna be a little bit bigger. Then we'll add some padding. So 0 0.5 rem top and bottom, and then two rem on left and right. And uh, we'll do a line height of 2.8 rem, make that a little bit bigger for an input. And then uh, border radius, this is going to be 20 pixels. And we'll do the same border radius for our button here as well. And then notice that it adds that little inset border. We don't want that. So let's do uh, just redefine the border to be one pixel solid and then DDD as a color. So it looks pretty good. Uh, we also want to have just a little bit of margin bottom, uh, maybe 0 0.5 rem, something like that. Maybe we could probably go up to maybe one rem to give it a little, even a little bit more space there. All right, so we've got our label, our input, and now the button. So let's style that button class. And the background color of this button, we'll just go with a dark color. So this will be RGBA. Uh, so this is uh, RGB with transparency or alpha. So 000, that's a black color. And then we'll just add the transparency of 0 0.75 and make it a little bit lighter. Then the color of the text will be white. And then we'll start to add some padding here. Uh, so let's do one rim and two rim. All right, so they are starting to look a little bit better. And uh, we'll redefine this border to make sure there's no, none of the built-in border stuff going on. So this will be the same as the color above. So one pixel solid. Actually, yeah, we'll do one pixel solid and then uh, the RGBA and then 000, zero uh, with 0.75 as the opacity or the transparency. All right, and then we still need to round this. Let's do our border radius of 20 pixels. And that should be looking pretty good. I think I've got a font size here of 1.4 rem. So make that font a little bit bigger. And that looks pretty good. One of the things that we'll notice is uh, it's a button. When we hover over it, we should probably uh, see a cursor and maybe a little transition of some sort. So let's add the cursor pointer. And let's also add a transition for the background color of 250 milliseconds. So then we'll go down and grab the button with a hover state. And now we'll add, when we hover on it, let's change the background color to RGBA000. And then let's just take a 0 0.85. And what this should do is when we hover, now we see we get a little darker color there as we hover. And we see the cursor pointer, which is nice. All right, so that's, uh, that's the majority of our styles right there for the form. We can do one extra thing, which we won't see this actually uh, work, but we'll do a media query and we'll do a min width of 786 pixels. For this media query, what that means is the styles that we put in here will only uh, go, will only take it, only be taken into account when the screen is greater than 786 pixels, which it's not right now. So again, we won't see this, uh, but we can go ahead and just kind of line it up anyway. So for this, for our form, uh, we'll target our form and we'll say grid template columns. What I want to do is define the columns to lay out uh, the label, the input, and the button side by side. So we'll do auto, one FR, and then auto. And what auto is, is it'll take up as much space as it needs for the label and the button. And in the middle, the one FR, that's basically a fractional unit, a fraction of the available space. So it's going to take up all of the available space that's left. And then inside of those, just to space them out a little bit, we can add a grid gap of uh, maybe one rim, something like that. And uh, lastly, we wanna make sure that these are all aligned center vertically. So align items is center. And then because these are all on one line now, our input doesn't need a margin bottom. So we can take away the margin bottom and set it to zero. So that would look pretty good on a, a, a wider desktop view as well as this mobile view that you can see right here. So that's going to do it for styling our component. In the next video, 
we're actually going to uh, create the function that will go out to the uh, movies DB API and grab information about the movies, which I think will be really fun. So I'll see you there in that next video. All right, so now we are ready to go ahead and uh, actually talk to or make a request to the movies DB API. So let's start by defining a function called search movies. And uh, this will be an async function. We'll talk about why in a second. And I'm just uh, labeling this out or stubbing this out as an arrow function. So you see this, uh, this arrow syntax here to get that arrow function. And uh, then inside of our form on the on submit, we want this to call our search movies function. And I think I've got a typo up here. That should be search movies with a capital M. Right, so we've got our function. Uh, what should happen if we do a uh, log of this uh, submitting? And uh, one of the things we want to make sure also is that um, you notice in here, there's a query parameter, which we left from a while ago. So let's actually get rid of that and just refresh that page. Actually, it'll go there anyway. Anyway, uh, what we want to do is make sure that uh, when this thing gets submitted, we prevent it from doing its default action of actually posting its data in a query parameter. So this is pretty typical with forms. Uh, you want to grab the event out of the parameters up there and then call uh, event. Um, prevent default. So now if we save and refresh, uh, clicking the search button here, uh, shouldn't have done anything. Let's double check to make sure that we got this all right. It looks like we uh, misdefined or misnamed the function there. So now we, if we click, notice that uh, we get this log popping up saying submitting, but this page didn't refresh, which is what we want. So that's good. All right, so we've got that. Now we need to actually go ahead and uh, work with our uh, API. So I'm gonna copy in this URL and just because it's a little lengthy. So what this is, this is um, this is the URL that we're going to use to talk to the MovieDB API. So it starts off with api.themoviedb.org slash three slash search slash movie. And then we add some query parameters to that string. Now, the first one is the API key. So this is my API key. What you want to do is paste in your API key. So replace this part with your actual API key what we did in that second video to make sure that you're able to make requests to this API as well. And then after that, we have a query parameter for the language, which is going to be in this case, English US, and then the actual query, which we will use in a second. But for now, let's just hard code something um, like Jurassic for Jurassic Park. Now, eventually what we had originally was ES6 template literal strings where we take a string. Actually, let's do it that way. Uh, let's create a variable const query equals uh, and then Jurassic Park. And the reason we're doing this is we're not yet tracking the input from the user. So we'll get that in a second. Let's just hard code this query string to something. Uh, and then we'll put it right here inside of the string using ES6 template literals. That's the back ticks here. And we can reference a variable, the value of a variable like this with the dollar sign in brackets. And then uh, page is one, so we're just gonna get uh, one page worth of results and then include adult. No, we don't wanna include any adult content. We might wanna make sure that this content that we see is nice and safe. All right, so with that URL, now we're gonna use something called the fetch API. And uh, what you do is you just call fetch with the URL that you're making the request to if you're making a get request. So this fetch will return a promise and to, uh, to handle that promise, you could either do a dot then and then get the response that way. Uh, what we're gonna do is use async await. So we can await that promise to uh, basically pause that function to wait for that code to actually finish and come back. And then we'll assign that to a res variable. The res is just the raw response. We need to actually convert that to uh, data. So the actual response body of that data. So we'll do uh, res.json. And what res.json does is it returns a promise as well. So we will await that to make sure we get the actual data coming back. All right, so let's save this. And uh, we should see if we do a search, this should, oh, if we need to actually log out the data. All right, so let's log that out. Click search. Uh, and we see a bunch of different things in here. The main thing we care about is that it has this results property inside of, or what results is, is an array of movies and then inside of each object or inside of each item is an object and it has the different properties of a movie that we care about. 
So that request is working. That's exactly what we want. One thing that is off here is if I were to have a typo in this uh, with forgetting the E or something and refresh and did a search, this is going to uh, throw an error and it's an error that actually Scrimba can't find. And it's because we're not handling that error ourselves. So what we want to do is just surround all of those requests with a try catch. And a try catch, basically what that's saying is, hey, I want you to try this code. And if it doesn't work, here's what I want you to do. Here's how I want you to handle that error in the catch. So we'll define the error there. And then inside of here, we can just console error the error. So we could log out that error uh, to the screen or to the to the console. So that is our basic search movies function. The next thing uh, we need to do is use state inside of our React component so that we can track the user's query. So we can track the what they enter into this query input down here. And then also we need to track when we get the movies back here, we need to track uh, those in a piece of state so that we can use it to render. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. We're getting to use state hook for React, which I think will be a lot of fun. So I'll see you there. All right, so now that we've got the function that will go out and actually uh, search for movies, we can start to track state in our application. And we're gonna have two pieces of state. Let me get rid of this extra console here. We're gonna have a state for, uh, let's just say states. The query, the user input query, so let's say input query maybe. And then the movies that we're going to display. So those are the two things that we need to track. And we're gonna do this by using something called use state. This is a hook in React uh, that is relatively new. Lots of people are really migrating over to using use state to manage state in their applications. This is basically the ability to manage state in a functional component, similar to how you do in class components in React, but without the overhead of actually having to create a class component. So what this looks like, we're going to create the first state here ourselves, uh, and it's going to look like this, and this will probably look kind of weird, and I will explain what exactly is going on here in a second. But we're going to call the useState function. And when we call useState, we send it basically a default value for our state. Now, this is the state that we're going to use for our query, the user query. And we define, hey, the first the initial value of this thing is going to be an empty string. That's what we want the uh, initial value of query to be. And what this will do is it will return an array of two things. The first thing is the actual state, the thing you want to track. The second thing is a function that will update that state. So you can call the function, the second, the second thing that comes in here, you can call that function to update the state of the first thing. So the, the typical convention here is whatever your state is, in this case query, we can choose what the name of that thing is. So all we're saying is the thing that comes back in the array at the first value, the zero index of that array, we'll call it query. And the thing that comes second, we'll call set query. Now this is array destructuring where we can get those specific first and second values out of that array and give them a name, which is pretty nice. So uh, what we wanna do is go down to our input and now we need to connect our input to the uh, the state that we just created. So I'm going to come down on a new line here, and I'm going to say the value of this thing is going to be query. Now, if we save this and then try to uh, type in here, notice nothing changes, and React actually gave us a, a an example here of what's going wrong, and it's saying we're not handling the on change. So we need to set the on change inside of the input to update the input so that it can be bound or binded to uh, the value of our state, the query. So to do this, we're going to define the on change and we're going to say this is going to be a function. What function do we want to happen or get called when uh, the key or the value inside of input actually changes? And what we're going to do is define our own function. So we're going to define an arrow function right in line here. This thing is going to accept the parameter of E. So that's by default on any of these on change events. It's going to have the event be a parameter. And then we want to call our set query. Remember this function up here that we got back in our state right here. We're going to call that function. And now we just need to pass it the value, the new value of the input. So what that's going to be is we're going to use our event and say E.target.value. So E is the event, target is the input itself, value is the value of what's inside of that input. And we're gonna take that value and update the query 
state with that new value. So we should be able to save here now and type in uh, Jurassic Park. And that works. If we did a query, uh, if we did an actual search, it's still using the, uh, the hard-coded query that we've got here. So we can actually get rid of this. And now this will use our state query. So if we save this and say, I've been searching Step Up. This is one of my favorite movies when I was in early high school. Uh, search for this. Now we're going to get back movies that are, you can see here, that are relevant to Step Up instead of the hard-coded Jurassic Park. But we could do Jurassic Park again as well. And uh, you would see, if we scroll down through the logs, you would see that we're getting videos for Jurassic Park. So that works really well. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to have a challenge of create, create the state for movies and update that state uh, when appropriate. So in this challenge, think back to what we did in the last video and think about when you might want to update the value of the movie state. All right, so create the state for movies using use state. Think about what your initial property is gonna be. What is it going to be set to originally? And then also go ahead and update that thing appropriately. So take, uh, take a few seconds here, pause the video, give this a shot, and then we'll come back and see how you did. All right, hopefully you did all right with that. Let's go ahead and, uh, and get started here. So we're gonna start by creating the state for movies. So it's gonna be movies and then set movies will be the function. And then we'll call use state and we need to pass it the initial value. So since movies is going to be an array, let's just pass an empty array as the initial value. So this array or movies will start off as an empty array. And then when we want to update it, that's actually after we get the data here, and if you remember, our data, it was data.results is what we actually cared about. So let's uh, let's search this again and just show you that uh, result, results is the array that's going to have the uh, movie objects inside of it. So we can take uh, our set or call our set movies function and pass it the data.results. So now we will be tracking which movie should be displayed on the screen for the user based on the search because of using the two use state hooks here for query and movies. So we're good to go in that sense. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on displaying the movie information to the user so that they can actually see the information that they're getting back from uh, making this API call. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video and I will see you there. All right, now that we're able to actually search for our movies, we wanna go ahead and display those inside of our search movies component. So you can only have one parent tag inside of uh, JSX what gets returned. So we're gonna to need to uh, create just some empty tags here. You can actually uh, do empty tags to get around the necessity of adding extra divs. If you don't actually need a div, you can just do empty tags there. And then inside of here, we're gonna have a div with a class name of card list. So then inside of this div, we are going to take our movies, map through them using a dot map, and then display relevant information about that movie. So what this is gonna look like is we're gonna have movies.map, and then uh, that map will uh, take a function as a callback, and that function will have a parameter for each individual item. So this is actually movie. So for each movie in movies, what do we want to return? Well, let's just start by returning maybe the movie.title. So movie.title. And in that case, in here, this doesn't need to be in, um, in brackets. So let's save that. Let's do a search for Jurassic Park. And let's save. And then if we scroll down, we should see a bunch of uh, movie.titles down here. Not in any great form, which is okay. We just want to kind of show that we can start to display this information. So let's start to get a little bit better with this. Let's say instead of just uh, showing the movie, let's do, let's open up our JSX and let's create a div with a class name of card. That's gonna be the container for each one of, uh, each one of the movies, all the information that's displayed about that. And then inside of this card, since we've got a div, we can, um, we can now display all the information that we wanted to. So one of the first things that we want to do is display an image for this movie. So we can do image and then class name equals card dash dash image. What this syntax is for defining these classes is them syntax. 
So you've got kind of your element here or your main object and then different elements within that object will have dash dash and then their name. And then I'm gonna copy in another line of code here. This is for the source of the image. So we can use the movie.poster path. Again, these are ESX template literal strings. And inside of that, we'll use the variable movie.poster path. And it goes on the end of this URL. Now I had to do some research to figure out where or what that URL was. So you just take it for what it's worth right here. And then we'll just add on the actual poster path. So then uh, we'll close that out. And we can also uh, put an alt tag here. And this alt tag can be movie.title and then add on, um, let's say just poster. So the alt for this would be like Jurassic Park poster or something like that. So let's save it. Uh, this will refresh. Let's run this again. So I'll do a search and hopefully we'll see. Uh, we'll see the images coming up. We'll have an error on here, which we'll talk about here in a second. So there are all of uh, all of the uh, movies that are coming back. Notice some of these don't have images. So we'll come back to that in a second too. But one of the things we have to do for each, when we use a map, we have to give a unique identifier for each one of uh, each one of the objects in that. So uh, we give it something called a key and we can get that key from the movie ID. So we can uh, say key equals and then just say movie.id. So that should help that error go away. Let's do a search one more time. We get an unknown error. I'm not sure why that one is there. We have our key defined. So I think that's okay for now. And then uh, let's go ahead and move forward. And uh, for our image, notice that some of these are displaying that don't have images. So let's say we want to go ahead and filter those out. Well, before we call our map, we can actually call filter beforehand. And we say for each movie, we decide whether or not we want to keep that thing based on if it has a poster path. So we'll just do movie.poster underscore path. And then we'll do the map. So what's going to happen here is for the array of movies, this is going to filter all of those movies and only keep the ones that have a poster path. So the only ones that only are only the ones that have an image. And then based on those, we'll perform the map, which will then iterate through and display all of this information. So let's say this again, let's now uh, run it again, search again. And it uh, looks like our errors are gone, so I think we're okay there. And now if we scroll down, we should see only image or only movies that have images. All right, so we've got our image displaying. Then we're going to have one other piece of uh, a div here with a class name of, and this will be card content. So this is going to be inside of this div is where we're going to put the title and description of our card and actually a few other things. So let's start with in H3 in a class name of card dash dash title. All right, and then inside of that, we wanna put the value for movie.title. So we'll close out that H3. And then we wanna have a, uh, a paragraph tag. So we'll have a paragraph tag and inside of it, we'll have a small tag. And the small tag will be the uh, release date. So we'll make that uppercase. And then the release date will actually be movie.release underscore date. So that's a property that we're looking for. Then we'll close out the small tag and the P tag. And the reason we're using the small tag inside of a P tag is we want this thing to take up the entire width. We want it to be a block element. And uh, to do that, um, we just surround it with a P tag. And then we are using small because we want it to be a little bit smaller in terms of the text size. And I'm going to copy and paste that same line of code. And the next one is going to be the rating. So instead of movie date, we can have rating. And this is going to be the movie.vote underscore average property. All right. And then lastly, we want to have a P tag with a class name of card dash dash D E S C for description. All right. And then inside of that, uh, it'll be the movie.overview. That's the property that comes back in that data. And then we'll close out our P tag there. All right, let's see what this looks like. Uh, if we search Jurassic Park now, we should have information about our movie. So we have the uh, title, which needs to be styled. It needs to be a lot bigger. Then we have the release date, the rating, and the description. So that's all the information that we want to have about this movie. 
In the next video, we'll go ahead and style this to make sure it looks really nice and presentable to the user so it's not just kind of laid out here uh, all in line. So we'll do that in the next video and I will see you there. All right, so let's start by styling our card. And for the card, uh, we're gonna have some padding. We wanna give it a little bit of breathing room. So four, uh, two rim and four rim. And then uh, we wanna give a border radius of 10 pixels just give it a little bit of a rounded border and uh with that we want to have a box shadow so box shadow is going to be one pixel one pixel that's the offset the x and y offset and then five pixels is the blur and then rgba zero zero comma zero comma zero and then 0 0.25 so this will just give it kind of a light gray here and so you see that box around uh around the car that looks pretty good we can also give it uh, a little bit of margin bottom uh, so maybe uh, one rim for 10 pixels. So uh, maybe maybe even two. Uh, yeah, let's do two. Give it a little bit more space. Now we see they're separated a little bit, which is nice. And uh, let's see, what else do we need in here? The background color, background color, we'll set to white. So we want this to be just a little bit different than what's uh, behind it uh, back there on the base, uh, the base background color for the body. And one thing you might notice is the the button here bumps right up to uh, the list that we're starting to do. So let's do our uh, card list and let's uh, do a margin top of four rim. So you did that card, not dash dash list, but just dash list. So now that will uh, give us some breathing room at the top. And now our stuff is starting to be displayed. It looks relatively okay, uh, but we could probably change a few things. So let's grab the card dash dash title. This is dash dash because title is an element inside of the card. And let's do a margin bottom of five or 0 0.5 rim and a font size of 3.2 rim. So it'll be a bigger title, make that stand out. That looks pretty good. And then uh, we can come into, uh, actually that's maybe all we need except for the image itself. So the image we want to be centered in here. So we can grab the card dash dash image and let's do a margin zero auto a little centering trick there and uh, for that to work we want to make sure that these this image has a display of block all right so this image now is centered and then it's got our title which is bigger than the rest of the text it's got our small text for these small details all right so that's starting to look pretty good we've got all of our stuff laid out in our cards one of the things we can do to clean up our search movies component is take all of this information about those cards and put it into its own component which is good practice for things like that of just separating out your code into different uh, files. So we're gonna do that in the next video and then we'll wrap up, we'll wrap up this course, which I think has been a lot of fun. So I will see you in the next video. Although this application is not too complicated, it's relatively simple. We do wanna talk a little bit about how best to start to break out your code into separate components or files so that it's really maintainable as your project grows. So one of the things that we can do is we can take this basic definition here of what a movie card looks like. We can take this and put it in its own component. So this is actually going to be a challenge for you. I would like you to give this a shot and see how you do and then uh, come back and pause and, or let's pause then come back and see how you did. So here's, here's what we need to do. You will need to create another file and that will be called the moviecard.js. That's what the name of that file will be. You'll need to create a, uh, a basic functional component. That functional component should return all of this information. That's what should go inside of that functional component. Now there is one catch here is we haven't really talked about props yet, properties being passed to a component. And so the way this works is every functional component or every component in React can receive a variable or a parameter called props. And those are the things that get passed to it. So to pass a property to something, as an example, if I wanted to pass, if this thing was a React component and I wanted to pass something called movie, then I could pass it just like any other HTML element would look inside of JSX. So this is how uh, inside of this file, we're going to have to pass this movie here to our new component and then that new component will reference that movie inside of the props and be able to display it appropriately. So hopefully that was clear enough. That's your challenge. Go ahead and, and, and take a few minutes to do that and pa I'll pause the video or you pause the video, see how you do and then come back and we'll do it together. 
All right, how did that go? Hopefully it went okay for you. What we're gonna do is start by creating a new file and this will be our movie card JS file. So we'll go ahead and open this up and then we'll start by importing React from React. And then we'll do an export default. So we're exporting the default here, a function. So we're doing functional components again. And then we'll call this movie card. And then this needs to return something. So what we're gonna do, this is actually going to return basically the same JSX that we had inside of search movie. So it's going to, or we are just going to copy all of that code and now come and paste it inside of our new component. And I'm gonna reformat this to look a little bit better on your screens. All right, and now hopefully you realize that we're trying to reference a property or an object called movie in this component that we, do, we don't have a reference to yet. So what we want to do is get our props and then we could do something like uh, get the movie object off of our props like this. And now we have the movie object that we can use and reference throughout the rest of our code. But we can make this a little bit simpler using something called destructuring. So if we use destructuring, we could do something like this surrounding the property that we want to get off of props to make it basically look like it's inside of an object. So this is basically saying the exact same thing where we can grab the movie property from props and then have that ready to reference later on. We can take this one step further and do this right inside of this definition of our parameters by doing this. So this is gonna take our props and it's going to get that property specifically called movie and let us reference it throughout our component. Okay, that looks good. Let's look at our search movies again now. And in this case, we want to import our movie card from the movie card JS file. So we'll import that component. And now we want to use it. So let's do a movie card and we'll close it out like that. And we want to pass the movie property to this movie card so that the movie card itself can display it. So in this movie or in this map, we get a reference to each individual movie and we pass that to the movie card itself. So let me refresh this browser here. Let's type in something, Jurassic Park again, and let's see if we get movie information back. And it looks like we do, but we're getting a warning here saying that uh, we've had this before where each individual item in a list should have a unique key prop. And what we did was we copied this key prop over here, but it really should go with the item that the map returns. And that is going to be our new movie card component here. All right, so now if we refresh this and let's try again, let's do Jurassic Park and search. We shouldn't see a warning or an error down here and we still get all of our information like we're used to. Awesome, so this is looking good. We're starting to break our code out into separate components. And this is definitely a best practice for you as you start building bigger and bigger React applications you're going to want to take advantage of creating separate components that are isolated from each other and give you a better way to maintain your code as it grows and you get more and more experience with React. So that's gonna wrap it up with the core functionality of this movie search app, which I think has been a lot of fun. In the next video, we will do a recap of what we've done. So I'll see you there. So as we wrap up here, I just wanna take a minute or two to recap on what we did, we built this React movie search app that is relatively simple, but I think covers some of the core concepts of React. We talked about uh, React components. We talked about functional components. We talked about uh, hooks, which is one of the most exciting features in React that people are using all over the place and loving. We talked about making fetch requests with the built-in fetch API in JavaScript. This is something that you'll do in almost every application that you build. At some point, you're going to need to call an API or get some sort of data, and that's exactly what we did here. And then we talked about styling and our CSS and how to create shareable components or reusable components in React, things like the, the display of the movie card that we could then drop in any other aspect of our application if we continue to add on more. So again, I think this is a really cool example of, of the core concepts of React that you can take with you going forward. I hope that you enjoyed the course, and I really want to thank you for taking this course on Scrumba as well. I think, like I said at the beginning, this is a very unique platform, and I hope that you got a lot out of participating 
in this course. So all in all, again, I just want to thank you for checking out the course and I will talk to you later.